Hello, it's me again. You've joined me at an exciting time. I'm ready to put the damp proof courses in. Sorry, could you just step back a bit? That's a bit much, thank you. Um, yes, I can put in a damp proof course and then I can lay an underfloor slab and then really it's a bit in my face. Thank you. Just, I just need that boundary. Thanks. Uh, yeah, damp proof course, underfloor slab, please. Damp proof course, underfloor slab, finish off the footing walls and then I can put in the timber frame. Get back! Ah! Thank you, that's better. Okay, let's get going. Episode 13, Damp Proofing. Okay, first thing, leveling up the ground with a laser level. You just set it up a little bit higher than you want it. That's 10 mil higher than the ground level I want. Cut it back for the matic. And then it's like playing splat the rat with green laser light. You just splat it wherever you see it and the line moves backwards. And it's done. Pretty easy. I'm just preparing to lay down the damp proof membrane by putting down 50 mil of blinding sand. So that's ground level. And you've got all the sharp bits on it and then you've got 50 mil of sand to protect the membrane. And a friend of mine's just been helping me out, getting that all nice and level and flat and compacted. It looks pretty good. Uh, I'll have a word. Claire? Yeah? What's this? Do you not like it? I do like it. I'm just not sure that building control are going to be into it. Oh. Better. It's um, it's more conventional. Yeah. On the retaining wall, I've really got to stop the damp, so it's belt and braces. I'm painting on a liquid membrane as well as using the plastic membrane. I try not to tread on the membrane too much while I'm laying it. I got the damp-proof membrane in place, and. There was immediately a huge rainstorm, so now we have a paddling pool, or maybe a boating lake. up a tarpaulin over the structure in case I need to keep out the excess water while I'm pouring the concrete. So should be ready to go. I bailed out all the water from the damp roof membrane and set up the tarpaulin to keep it dry. Now we've got some of the hottest days of the year so it's a sunshade um, and the concrete slab has been poured. There she blows. So I'm just setting up, ready to start the stem walls that take the timber frame. So to give you an overview, the DPM is in place and the underfloor concrete. And now I'm going to add these thermalite inner walls that support the timber frame. Because there's not an awful lot to secure the timber frame to, I've set these steel straps into the concrete slab like this and um, just notching the, uh, the bottom of the stem wall in between them. Here's a nice solution for when you're laying a course that's shallower than the laser level is high and you can't drop the laser level down. To get it at this height you can see here that I'm working straight off the concrete slab. You just use a block of a known height, so this brick is 70mm. Uh, and I know that I want the top of this one to be at uh, 5 4 5 on the tape measure that's resting at the datum point here. So I come up by 70mm 
to 475, set the laser up there, and then just work off this line here on the top of the brick. So that's the depth of my cement underneath the course, right there. Here we have the finished plinth wall for supporting the timber frame. So that's the outer masonry layer. And that's the DPM rising through the center of the plinth and going that way. This is DPC level. Um, so everything on the inside of that is dry. This shelf here um, supports the floor joists like this. So this gap here is an underfloor space that acts as ventilation for the, the rest of the house. And then the timber frame for the structure sits on this wall here and there's one of the first verticals going in to fix that structure and this is the frame it's going to sit on here over here we've got the same arrangement the, the floor joists go on here but here you've got uh, gaps for ventilation to create a sort of a periscope effect so the ventilation is in here and then up to uh, air bricks through the structure there which is necessary because we've got the uh, the floor below uh, outside ground level and then going on round got this one and then the um, this uh, plinth wall is higher because that's the retaining wall for the, uh, the higher ground on the far side so if, but again that one is uh, going to take the floor joists and um, the frame sits on here So you can see here the first of the wall fixings. Um, we've got the, the wall starter kit here, which is going to take a, a brick cladding layer up here. And then you've got 70mm of hempcrete to protect the timber from the outside. And um, then you've got the timber frame. And then on the inward side, you've got another 100mm of hempcrete and the DPC level is there and below the DPC you got a hundred mil of uh, insulation cork, expanded cork insulation and that's the, um, the wall fixing and up the top here you can see this one here is the first wall plate um, to take the rafters from the roof so ready to um, drop the timber frame on now I'm just going to get some uh, fixings in these. These studs are ready to be resin bonded into the wall now. I just need to clean all the dust out of the hole very well. That's usually done with a, a blower and a, a bottle brush, but I don't have that kind of way with all, so I have a, a sucker and a toothbrush. I'm not quite sure why everybody always blows them when uh, sucking you get it cleaner, I'd have thought. I've just got the 15mm um, tube and the vacuum cleaner with a gap here so the vacuum cleaner doesn't burn out. Um, do that a few times. It comes out very very clean. The resin comes in these two part packs with the, uh, the resin around the outside and the hardener in the middle. And um, there's this mixer nozzle on it with the helical mixer down the centre, so it starts out unmixed here and comes out mixed. So you just give it a little squeeze and it primes it. And when you get a equal colour coming out the end, it's nice and mixed, you're ready to go. And that goes in its own designated gun. Put it into the hole and then uh, put the stud in with a turning action and then just wait for it to dry. Here are the resin modded studs. Ready to fix the uprights in place. The uprights are in place. It turns out that the wall of the house here is leaning out this way, so I've had to plane the upright into a wedge shape to define this vertical. I need to take the frame, and there's a mastic seal 
behind the timber to make this an airtight joint. And then the, the damper, of course, is taken up the wall a metre a bit. In case there's any damp working up the old wall here, it protects the, the hempcrete, which is going to go on here. Here's the other side. Same deal. The damper, of course, goes up the wall a bit. So I'm ready to put the frame in place. These resin anchors here are a bit trickier to drill because this frame is already in place. So I had to cut down through this depth of wood before hitting the thermal light block work here. So what I've been doing is um, cutting to about there for the spade bit and then stopping before I trash the spade bit on the cement. And then uh, knocking the, the bottom out of the hole in the wood with a, a smaller bit and with the, with the big masonry bit. And then drilling on through with the hammer drill and the big masonry bit. And then I found that the um, where the big masonry bit emerges from the hole in the bottom of the wood um, is tighter than the spade bit. So it's, it makes a seal around a, a circular tube if I try and use a circular tube for sucking out the dust. And so um, I've uh, fashioned myself a little suction tube here out of a copper pipe which has got a slot down the side for letting the air into the hole as the vacuum cleaner sucks the dust back out again. And um, then to get the brush in there to brush the dust out, I needed a toothbrush extension. Here it is. So get in there and brush it out. And um, now I'm ready to go for some resin. Everything made of steel is painted to protect it from the lime and all the other fixings are stainless steel. The frame is done. It's hard to get far enough away to get a decent shot of it, but you get the gist. If you knock these walls down here, you'll get a much better, clear view. Right enough. And now I'm ready to begin the brick cladding, which goes around one side of the frame. So there you go. Now you know all about how nice and dry it's going to be in the new extension. Oh hey, don't go. Come back. If, if you did like the video, um, please hit like and, and subscribe. And there's a there's a link to the Patreon page in the in the description box. Oh, on my own again.